G'day guys, my name's Nick and this is my channel Low Range Nick where I do videos about full driving, accessory fitting and maintenance for your full drive vehicle. So in today's video I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for my 12 volt setup in the back of the MUX. So because I've finished the draw system now it's time to start doing the 12 volt stuff. So I've got a giant 85 amp hour AGM battery, I've got a little Nava 12 volt uh, accessory port here where I can put heaps of accessories in and all the fusible links. I've got about 7 metres of twin core uh, wiring which I've put a maxi fuse on to go on the battery end and also just a terminal uh, for the negative. And I've also got here the battery tray tie down for the battery and then just a universal battery tray which will just bolt down to the uh, back of the drawers behind where the fridge is. There's a bit of space. So I've decided not to put it in the engine bay just because there isn't that much room. I mean, they do make kits for your secondary battery to go in there behind the main battery, but it makes it pretty cramped in the engine bay and I didn't really like the idea. So I've got a little bit of space behind the fridge here and behind the seat, just enough to fit this dual battery. So I think it's a perfect spot. You know, it's gonna keep it dry, clean and safe and out of high temperatures and you know, all the dirt, dust and mud that it's going to get hammered with in the engine bay. I think it's a good idea that I'm putting it in the back of the car so it'll keep it all nice and safe and hopefully make it last a really long time. So I'm going to start doing the uh, setup now just by uh, bolting down the battery tray behind the drawer there and then I'll start by fitting the battery in position and then running my wiring. Okay guys, so this is the area behind the seat that I've got room to mount this battery. So I've just started by mounting the battery tray to the back of the drawers there. So I just lined it all up, test fitted it, uh, made sure the seats still went up and down and everything and didn't contact the battery or the tray. And uh, then I've drilled my holes just through the timber false floor I've made. And uh, I've just finished bolting that battery tray down. So it's all bolted down now and I'll just put the, uh, the new 85 amp hour giant AGM in there. So I've just finished mounting the 85 amp hour giant battery and it sits in the tray perfectly and it's nice and secure now. And then I've got the Red Arc BCDC 1225 just sitting up here. Nice and close for me to wire it all up. And then I'm planning to mount the uh, Nava fuse box just down there a little bit further beside it. So it's all going to be in close proximity and make it really easy to wire up. So there's the main battery, which I'm going to have to put the uh, power cords off. And now I'm going to need to run them through the firewall. So I've decided to use this grommet down here. So all I've done is used a razor blade, and I've just cut a little slit in it. And now I'm just going to push the wiring through the firewall and into the passenger footwell. So I've pushed the uh, wiring through the firewall there, so you can see it coming through the top of the firewall grommet. So all I'm going to do now is just pull that wiring all the way through into the passenger footwell. Then I'll run it along the uh, sill panels all the way to the rear of the car. So there's the end to my power and earth leads. And I've run the rest of the wiring down through this grommet down here. Just that one there on the firewall. And uh, I've run it just straight through that grommet and into the passenger footwell. So here's the rest of the wiring guys that I've pulled through into the passenger footwell. That's uh, come through the firewall grommet. Now I'm just going to pop off this trim here and all these trims. I'll leave this big one because usually you can push it through underneath it and pull it out the other side. And then I'm also going to remove this trim here and then I'm hoping that I can just push it up the back trim a little bit just so it can come out behind the seat there and then I can wire it into my secondary battery and also into the red arc. So I've just popped this side kick panel trim off. So it's just one little 10 mil plastic nut that you gotta take off. And then it just pops out this way and then it comes off quite easily. And then I've run the wiring just down behind here and then along the edge of the carpet. So I've just fed the wiring through underneath the B pillar trim. So it went through pretty easy and all the way through to the other side. 
So I just had to make sure that wiring was nice and flat and then I was easily able to push it through the other side. So there's the head of the wiring coming through the B-pillar trim. So I'm just going to pull all the wiring through now back into the uh, rear passenger seat area and then I'll go ahead by feeding it right up to the battery. Alright guys, so I've run the wiring all the way up to the back right near the battery and right near the red arc. Now I've just got the uh, instructions out and I'm just double checking the uh, wiring diagram just to make sure I put the correct wires to the uh, BCDC charger. So what I might do before I uh, connect all the wires to the BCDC is just put the uh, trim panels back on. So I'll just put all the little panels. So I'll just put these panels back on, the front and rear one. And then I'll be ready to start soldering the wiring together and connecting the BCDC charger into the 12 volt system. So just in case you're wondering guys, these panels, they pretty much just clip straight down. So all you need to do is just put it back into the right spot, like so. And then just push it down like that. Now clip straight back into spot. That's how easy it is. So now we can start with the wiring. So I've just connected the power and the earth wire there. Now with the Red Arc system, they give you two little crimps. So basically what you do is you crimp those two together and then you solder onto the end to make it a really strong joint and also a very low resistance joint. So I'm just going to solder those two ends now and I'll show you what it looks like before I heat shrink. <coughs> so I'm just going to solder this joint here. I'm just using a butane torch just to heat up the, uh, the metal crimp that I've just put on. And basically once that crimp gets hot enough, I can push the solder into the wiring which will connect it straight to that crimp when it sets and then it will be an unbreakable connection. So now that's hot enough, it's absorbing straight into the wiring just like that. I'll just do both sides. Try not to light the car on fire. Oop, there's a little fire. There you go, so those two are both soldered together now. And I didn't burn the car down, so that's a positive. And I'll just put the heat shrink over the positive. Try not to melt anything in the car. And do the positive now. Now, with this blue flame, you don't want to stay on the heat shrink too long or it'll actually light on fire or melt it. So you just need a really quick um, once over just to get it up to the correct temp and then it should melt down to the size of the wiring. So there we go, those two are all good. Now that I've uh, wired up the power and the earth to the red up control unit here, I'm just going to wire up the brown wire. So this brown wire is basically the power supply from the red arc unit to my secondary battery. So I need to put a inline fuse in that circuit from here to here, just to protect it for any you know short circuits between here and there, or any issues that the red arc might have with overloading. Uh, or anything like that related to an electrical issue between the red arc and the battery. So basically what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to take the end off this wire here just long enough to fit into the little splicer I have. So I'll just go around with the side cutters just until I can pop that wiring off like that. And now with the BCDC charger they supply you with these little uh, crimping things to crimp the two wires together and then you also solder it as well so it's a very strong and a very low resistance joint. So I'm just going to put that on there and then crimp it down with my side cutters until it clamps onto the wiring and now I'll do the same with this end. Just put it into that side just like that. Just make sure there's no, no frayed bits sticking out. Just make sure that's sticking in there all the way. And then you can crimp this side down as well. Just 
So just make sure you before you crimp that on, you've got your heat shrink on there. If you don't have your heat shrink on there, you're kind of stuffed. You've got to cut it off and then, you know, put another one on. So I've got that on there now. So all I'm going to do is use my blowtorch just to heat that joint up until I can absorb the uh, solder into that joint, and that'll make it super, super strong. So there you go. You can see the wiring's getting up to temp now. And that solder is just absorbing into the wiring really easy. So pump a fair bit of solder into that. And now on the other side we'll put a fair bit around there as well. A little bit in the middle there to go through this, the middle section. And now that is going to be a super strong joint. So it's crimped and soldered. You can't beat that. I'm just going to slide the heat shrink over it. Just to cover the whole joint. I'm just going to use a standard lighter just to... Uh, make that heat shrink shrink down to the size of the wiring. So all I need to do now is connect that to my positive terminal because I've already put a terminal on here. So basically all I did to put this connector on here was I just took the uh, rubber coating off the wiring there, just enough to slide that connector on and then heated this connector up with the blowtorch and pushed the solder into it so it's a nice strong joint and then I just put a bit of heat shrink over it as well. So it's a really easy way to do these battery terminals and it's very strong. So now I'm ready to connect that to the positive. So the battery comes with these little terminal covers. So I'll just slide that terminal cover over that connection. Just leave that there. And then I'm ready to put this connection onto the positive terminal on the battery. So I'll just loosely wind that in because I've got a few other connections to make to this battery before I'm done. So I'll just leave that there and now I can start on running my negative wire to the earth point down the back. So I'm going to run it from here along the top of the battery along the side of the uh, system here and then down to where the old seat bolts are uh, and use that as an earthing point to the chassis. So I've just made up an earth lead here uh, just to run from the secondary battery to the body earth which is going to be down the back on the old seat bolts. Um, so basically what I've done is I've just put two terminals on there, a nice large one to go on the seat bolt, a small one to go on the battery and uh, I'll just run it now. So first thing I'll do is put the little battery cover on there, on that point there. Now this is going to be my main earth point for all my accessories. So that's why I've gone for a thicker gauge wire. So my other wiring here from the BCDC is 8 AWG, whereas this is 6 AWG, so it's thicker, so it can handle a lot more amperage. Because this is going to be the main earth for all the accessories running off this secondary battery. So I need it to be a really good earth and be able to handle lots of amperage. So I'll just put that onto the negative terminal of the battery, just finger tight. And now what I'll do is I'll just run this end down the side of the drawers and then tighten it down onto the uh, old seat bolt location. So all I'm going to do now is use a screwdriver just to clean up around the top of that thread just to clean away the paint just so I can get a really good earthing point there. So you can see there I've just scratched away the paint just around the top of the thread. So now when I bolt down the uh, tie down point and then put the uh, earthing point over the top of that, it's going to have a really good earthing body connection back to the uh, main battery and also the secondary battery. So I'll be able to easily run accessories off it. It'll be a very good earth, uh, so I won't have any issues with uh, earthing my other accessories that I wire up to the secondary battery. So you can see down there the tie down point, and then you can see the earth coming off the back of it. So I've just put a couple of washers in there just to space it out correctly. So now that earth connection is connected, the uh, dual batteries should be charging now. So now I've run the power and earth from the main battery to the red arc. And I've also run the power from the red arc to the secondary battery. And then I've finished running the earth to the body. I've started the car up and we have lights of operation. So the red arc is now working and it is uh, charging my secondary battery. So it's always best to uh, double check all your work before you put everything back together and tidy up all the wiring. 
I'm just going to double check it with a multimeter now and make sure I'm getting the correct voltage at the secondary battery there and uh, then I'll be able to start tidying up the wiring. Well there you go guys, so I've tidied up all the wiring, put the uh, black split tubing on it and uh, put in my fuses, covered it all up with the uh, terminal covers there and now you might notice I've changed the tie down here on the battery. So the other one I had, it sat out like this on a bit of a U and that was making it touch on the back of the seat. So I didn't want to damage the seat at all over you know a long period of time. So I decided to change how I tied it down just by using one of these little tie down straps and that's really solid so that's not going anywhere. And I've also moved the BCDC charger. So the BCDC charger's on a different angle now. So this is so I can quite easily see the uh, LEDs here which show you what's happening uh, while it's charging and stuff like that. So now that the dual battery system's all charging and the wiring's finished, I wired up my little fuse block. So this little fuse block, it just screws into the, the sideboard there. And I've just got my earth cable coming off it, which goes to the secondary battery. I've got my power cable coming out at the bottom, which goes through a fuse and then to the secondary battery. And then that fuse block's live and we can use it. I've already got two accessories running off it, so I've got my 12 volt sockets and I've also got my lights. So you can see the two fuses there. So you've got the earth cables up here and the power cables down here. So it's super easy once you've wired it up to put your accessories onto the power and earth and pop the fuse in. And you know it's going to be a good connection and look after all your wiring. So here's the little 12 volt socket I've been using for my fridge, uh, camping lights and charging our phones. So it just runs from the back there, up that wiring, and then into that side of the, uh, the fuse block up there that you can see. So the other thing I ended up wiring up was these two little camping lights. So they're both on switches like this, and they also have their own little swivel. So you can angle where you want the light, which makes it really handy. You can have one pointing out at camp and one pointing down at, you know, when, where you're making dinner. So all I did with those was just ran the wiring through the boot, down through this little grommet, or this little link here, through the body, down the side trim, all the way down there, under this trim, and then you can see it coming out just in there. And then that just links up with my other wiring onto the uh, 12 volt little fuse block there. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, if you did please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and stay tuned for more build videos on the Asuzu Engrams. Yeah.